Hello guys and welcome, it's Friday today, thank you for joining us. And today we're going to be forming another experiment to compare the human eye with a gimbal and in-camera stabilization. So stay tuned, let's roll the intro. The human eyeball has amazing inbuilt stabilization. There's actually a few mechanisms of stabilization in the eye which actually outdo cameras and gimbals in some way and actually are beaten by gimbals in certain ways too. The human eyeball has an incredible way of stabilizing everything you see. Now that a lot of stabilization gear is coming out, we can begin to compare how the eyeball works in comparison to how electronic stabilization works. And sometimes it leads us to think, why don't camera companies use the human eye stabilization as a model to clone in order to create the perfect stabilization? So first of all, let's, say, let's have a look at the newly released gimbal. The gimbal is an amazing tool because it allows the camera to remain centered regardless of your actions because it has three axis stabilization. So for example, if you're turning it even quickly, left and right, it remains dead center. This can be compared to the human eyeball, which can actually move inside its socket. For example, if I move left and right, what I'm actually, what's actually happening is my eyeball is actually remaining in the direction that my body wants to. In the same way, an electronic gimbal has the ability to maintain its position regardless of the body. Whether the body moves left and right, it remains in the same place. In this way, a gimbal can be compared to the human eye. The limitations of a gimbal, however, are that if you move it left or right, or even forward or backwards, there's no way it can stop that motion from being captured, meaning it can't stop the motion in one place. This can only actually be done by, the, by one camera that I know of, and that's the, the Panasonic GH5. Because newly, they newly released a new stabilization which allows the camera to remain fixed in one place. It's called image stabilization lock. And what's great about this is that even if you move a little bit left or right or up or down, it actually maintains its place. So if the camera moves, if the camera moves right, the sensor stays in the same place. And if the camera moves left, the sensor stays in the same place. That way you've actually got a locked image. Now this is actually one of a kind, and it's actually better than the human eye because the human eye can't do this action either. The human eye can only be compared to a gimbal, which when moves right and left, it actually maintains in the same place. So the human eye can be much more compared to a gimbal than a camera. Most camera stabilizers only use the method of preventing any shakes from appearing, and they do this working against the movements. So for example, if you have a movement, it kind of works against it. That's no all normal camera stabilizations work in that way. So really, when you take a gimbal and when you take a, a digital camera with inbuilt stabilization and when you're comparing them to the human eye, really you're looking at two functions which are completely different and which the human eye is very similar to both in some ways. But I think that if you take both of these ideas and put them together, you could come up with the most ultimate stabilization. And I think that that technology is yet to come in the future. This was the Eye Candy channel. Today we talked about eyes, isn't that ironic? Subscribe for more tech, filmmaking, and more tutorials in the future. Thanks for watching, bye for now.